Next to a story of two Melbourne men who have set aside generational hatred to forge a very special friendship. The traditional enemies are now taking their pathway to peace back to their native home of South Sudan, where they've been invited to play key roles in that nation's quest to develop national reconciliation and a lasting peace. Peter Kaka and Nyok Gore are traditional enemies. They're from rival Sudanese tribes locked in generational violence. Nyok Gore is a member of the dominant Dinka Boer tribe. Since 2011, after the independence of South Sudan, the level of violence has increased among tribal groups. In 2012, I received the news of my cousin who was killed in a tribal conflict. Nyokgo's cousin was killed by members of the Mulay tribe. Peter Kaka is Mulay. I got uh, two of my uncles being killed. One is uh, following my, my dad, another one following the, the other one. All two of them gone. And these are relatives killed at the hands of Dinkabu? Yes, they are. Revenge killings have fueled Sudanese fighting for half a century. Imagine Peter Kaka's surprise when he received a phone call from Nyok Gore trying to broker peace. The first when he gave me a call, I heard him. And at the same time, I wanted also to listen what he said. And uh, I was thinking like, well, always we keep blame each other. Uh, the, his community blame our community. We also, we blame their community. So this blaming is continuous, you know, to, to motivate uh, people, you know, down there to continue fighting. For six months, Nyok Gore and Peter Kaka tried listening instead of fighting. So then that becomes us versus them, which leads back to violence, harm against the self or others. So you can see the cycle just continuing. Sometimes the conversation was terse and tense, but they persisted. Both men were determined to break the cycle of violence. It's been very difficult to, to, to really see from his perspective how he feel. And, and that's where I really took an humble position and just listened to him. He felt that somebody was really able to listen to him, and that's how he found that, you know, if there are more other people within Dingabo like Nyok, you know, leaders that can be able to listen to, to, to people like us, I think we can be able to find uh, some understanding. I think Nyok now has uh, become my real friend and my real brother. Nyokgo naturally embraces cultural difference and diversity. Fifteen months ago, he became the first Dinka Bull to marry a white Australian. It's too easy to look at differences and not the similarities. Now he's sharing his lessons of peace and understanding with other Sudanese Australians through an organisation called Initiatives of Change. Here was my friend. A brother to me, Peter Kaka, we've been, you know, leading this group together and it's been a wonderful journey. And he hopes that journey could be a stepping stone to lasting peace in South Sudan. After a recent trip to his homeland, Nyok Gore and his wife Catherine were chosen to play key roles in the fledgling nation's quest for national reconciliation. We um, went along to a meeting with the Vice President, spent quite a bit of time with the Vice President's wife, who's very, um, very, very motivated about reconciliation for South Sudan and really has a vision for, for healing and working through a lot of the trauma of the past. So uh, we built relationships with, with a few people over there and then the Vice President's wife said to Nyok and I, well, I've got a proposal. I think you guys should move to South Sudan for four years to work on this with us. <laughs> so that was uh, qu quite, it was kind of sprang out of the blue, I guess, for us. The couple planned to spend an initial three months in South Sudan 
assisting the reconciliation process. Peter Kaka will join them. It is very important. At this particular time, people are divided. Leadership is not uh, really in a, in a collaborative position. And, and that is a big struggle for the nation like South Sudan to really embark on development. It needs reconciliation. And it's one way that people can be able to find peace and security in South Sudan. Nyok Gore was a child soldier who became a refugee, one of the so-called lost boys. Reverend Tim Costello is trying to rally financial support for his odyssey. Now, some 26 years later, with a beautiful Australian wife, he's going back, and he's going back to be a force for healing and for reconciliation. I know that so many people, whenever they pick up the phone with a call from South Sudan, they don't know if that's going to be good news or bad news, and that um, the death of a family member is a common thing that we hear about, and for people to be going through that time and time again, even when they've found safety and refuge in Australia, um, leaves, leaves South Sudanese very connected with their country. In April, traditional enemies Nyok Gore and Peter Kaka will be in South Sudan together, sharing the lessons of their own peace process and leading by example. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you very it's much. Good. Relationship yeah. here. Yeah, it is. Thank it is. you. Yeah. I hope we you know we can be able to have this relationship and yeah. and let our people also be I able mean, to hold yeah. hand together. This is the future that I see in South Sudan that had happened between the two of us.